Hi, welcome to Games Made Easy. My name is Avilia and this is Peter. Today I am very happy to teach you and give you tips on how to play the solo and two-player game of Dune Imperium, designed by Paul Denon and published by Dire Wolf. If you want to learn all the rules of the game, not just the two-player or solo, watch my other video here. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button and the bell to get notified when I post new videos. It helps a lot. In both the two-player and the solo game, you will add the House Hagal to decide where the rival faction sends its agents to. The House Hagal deck is made of location cards, sending rival agents to a few blue, green or yellow spaces, as well as to the faction spaces. Next to the location is the bonus gained that turn, either troops or going up an influence track. At the bottom are bonuses used during the combat phase. Arakeen cards vary depending on whether you play solo or two players. And you also use the reshuffle card for the two-player version. I'll start by showing you how the two-player game works. Start by removing the three cards marked 1P from the House Hagal deck and then shuffle the cards. Pick a color for the rival. Take the three agents, take its troops in the supply, but do not place any in the garrison. Add one of its cubes at the bottom of each influence track and the combat marker here. How Sagal is used to block spaces and participate in combat. It doesn't collect resources and build a deck, and it doesn't score victory points, but it serves the role of a spoiler. How Sagal plays after each agent turn of the first player. Reveal the top card of the How Sagal deck to send a rival agent to that board space. If the location is occupied, draw a new card. If you draw the Shuffle Now card, shuffle the deck and draw a new card. You send the House Hagal agent to the space indicated on the card. With this icon, the rival goes up the indicated influence track. The rival does not collect bonuses but can take the Alliance token. If the card is a Harvest Spice card, follow the instructions and return all the bonus spice from that space to the bank. If it's a combat space, deploy two troops from the garrison to the conflict. If there's no troops in the garrison, you do not deploy any troop. For each cube, the rival recruits one troop from its supply to its garrison. If it's also a combat space, add them directly to the conflict. The rival takes his last turn after the first player takes his last agent turn. The rival does not take a reveal turn, it moves directly to the combat phase. If the rival has at least one troop in the conflict, draw a House Hagal card and resolve the sword icons in the bottom section. Apply the number of swords as a combat bonus. Players can play combat intrigue cards after that. The two players share the spoils as per the standard game rules, with the exception that the rival doesn't actually collect anything. Also, the rival cannot take a control marker to claim a space. However, if the rival wins a combat for a space already owned by a player, remove the player's marker. Now let me show you how the rules change for the solo game where now you play against two rival factions instead of one. These factions don't buy cards, but they compete for influence. They can also collect resources, intrigue cards and victory points. They're not just spoilers, they can defeat you. Choose a colour for each rival faction. Place one cube at the start of each influence track. Choose one leader for each rival. You cannot pick Paul or Elena. And if it's your first solo game, it's a good idea to pick Earl Thorvald and the Beast. Place two agents on each leader. I picked the Sadokar level, so I put three troops in each garrison and I don't add any extra starting resources. So you and the two rivals all start with one water and each rival also picks one intrigue card. Add the Swordmaster token of each rival into the conflict deck as indicated on the difficulty table. So here with four cards on top. Remove the cards marked P2 from the House Hagal deck and shuffle it. Change the cost of the Mentat space. At this difficulty level, it costs 5 Solari instead of 2. The rival on your left will take the first player marker. Now you're ready to play. The rivals will take their turn one after the other in sequence with you. Most of the rules of the two player game will apply with the following exceptions. If the card is a Harvest Spice card, the rival collects the bonus spice and also collects the base spice with it. And like all other resources collected, they go on the rival's leader. When they gain influence, rivals pick the faction in which they have the least. In case of a tie, you pick for them. 
Rivals earn victory points from conflicts and from faction influence tracks, both for reaching two influence and for having an alliance token. However, they do not collect the bonus for reaching four influence. They also gain control of spaces by placing their control marker. They will collect bonuses and gain the one troop bonus in later turns. Rivals can also gain the Mentat and use it during the round. Rivals both gain their third agent when you reveal the conflict card above the rivaled Swordmasters. Rivals use their Signet Ring ability of the leaders for the Arakeen cards, but they never use the left ability of their leader. As soon as a rival has the resources or entry cards indicated in this table, they spend them for victory points. At expert level, when fighting for conflict level 1 or 2, rivals do not deploy troops to the conflict if they already lead by two or more troops. They place those in the garrison instead. However, for level 3 conflicts, they always deploy into the conflict. Finally, during combat, each rival faction draws one Hagal card. If you ever get the Court of the Market Intrigue card endgame, Consider that each rival will have two of the Spice Must Flow cards, so that would mean that you need at least three. Now, my tips to win at Dune Imperium are, check my other video on how to play a three and four player, because most of the tips there apply here. It is well worth waiting for round three to go to one of the Spice places, because you're almost guaranteed to have two additional Spice instead of one. The difficulty levels rise relatively quickly, so I find it's a good idea to work your way up slowly. Despite what I said in the multiplayer, in the solo mode, it's a good idea to get the Swordmaster. So that's how you play Dune Imperium at two players or solo. Both bring different perspectives to the game. They're good fun and good training to learn more about the game. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.